Hey everyone, Zlurp Nation, we're talking to you. Biron is here, Valtrick is here, Extreme is here, Johnny P is here, episode three of Zlurpcast TV. We're talking about cons, the con experience. We're talking Gen Con, Adepticon, Origins, all the cons in the world that are tabletop based, we're gonna talk about in some shape or form here. I wanna open it up first with a question. We didn't prep anyone, so you don't know what I'm gonna say, but I want each of you to tell me your first Gen Con experience. I'll go. My first Gen Con was in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. First and only and last Gen Con. <laughs> you've, you've already closed the book on it? Yes, because I hate Gen Con. What, so what do you hate about it? It's too many people. Even back then when there was Yeah, and I also people. really dislike um, people that are really into role-playing games on a personal level. And there's a lot of that there. I really so, dislike anyone that plays board games that I don't play. <laughs> and there are a lot of those there. Um, I got accosted by a Klingon who was in character talking to me. And it made He's me... In there. Wait, you don't speak Klingon? No. Okay. No. So back then, though, Milwaukee was probably 2005 and before, maybe? 04, 05 and earlier? Uh, maybe even earlier than that. I don't remember. You weren't even playing miniature games that much then, though. So no, no, I was playing D and D mainly. So that those are your people. But I, I, I yeah. hate everyone that participates in my hobby. That beer drinking gamers, Wisconsin. That's your people. I went to the German restaurant there. That was fun. Yeah. Oh, that's a good place. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been there, but uh, so. But the fact that you were playing D and D though, that's really a, a huge part of that crowd. Why did you hate them? Because it wasn't well, your the way I played D and D, and I, I played many years with uh, Grognar Games owners owner Todd. Um, we yeah. played more of a strategy. Can you, can you put a Grognar thing up there every time you mention Todd. The little yeah. ding Grognar. Maybe his logo because <laughs> you get more work to do. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't pay us anything yet. Yet. Uh, you, in fact, um, you paid. You paid him. He yeah. Me over four years. <laughs> but. We, we would play it more as a strategy battle game. Like, Todd go, okay, now we got to role play. And I go, I got to go. So you're, basically, <laughs> you're, just, you're just fighting the whole time. You weren't really embracing how most people enjoy that game. What, I, my first question is, what do I need to hit? Okay. He'd be like, so well, we got to role play. I go, well, how much experience points is that worth? So for you, playing those <laughs> games was a hangout more so than I love this game. Yeah, and that's kind of what all games are to me. <laughs> I mean, I like a lot of games, sure, but... For some people, I mean, that's a good point, though. I mean, obviously, it'll come out throughout this conversation, but a lot of people go to cons to play games. And that's a huge distinction from a lot of other people go to cons, cons to just look around, buy shit, observe, whatever. Uh, like Creep on girls in cosplay. Yeah. That grosses me out. Yeah. No, there's the hot girl in chain mail. You want to see what's underneath. I get it. You follow her with the camera. Totally get it. Gen uh, Con hot, though. Not hot hot. Right. Uh, but I mean, people go there, a lot of people go there to play a certain game. Right. And for some people, and I don't, Mike might fall into this, I don't know, we'll find out, but there's some people that go to Gen Con, and that's their only time of the year they see certain people, and then oh, they yeah. play certain games with those people, and that's their, like, it's like a family reunion yeah. with friends in a game. Is that a fair point? Yeah, and also, um, it, to be totally honest, the way I look at my one and only trip to Gen Con was I had to do jury duty once and it was federal court and I actually had to sit on a like trial for a real week. jury or like D and D jury, D and D jury, like real, <laughs> you're going to the federal court building and you're going to, you're going to be on a jury for a week and a half. Oh no. I thought that was your character. No, 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 no. This is IRL as they say. How much experience is sentenced into death? It turns out federal court's the way to go because they pay you mileage. So I walked out of there with a $400 check. Oh, it's nice. Uh, pro tip by the way. Um, I hated it because I had to go into the city. And for those who don't know, which I live in the suburbs. Let's go to downtown Chicago. So I hated it during the time. But at the end, I was glad I had the experience. That's how I felt about Gen Con. It was jury duty. You didn't get paid for it, though. No. And I pay, paid out of pocket for it. Yeah. But it's the same so, thing. Like, I'm glad I did it. I don't need to do it again. So you went one time yes. in Milwaukee, and that was it. So that was probably at least almost 20 years ago. 
Yeah, at least, yeah. Well, I mean, probably, I, I would say so, because my first time was probably 25 years ago. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, good to know. We know you're feeling on cons. We'll talk about... No, oh, Gen Con, not right. cons in general. Okay, Gen good con. point. We'll talk about some other ones, too. Uh, Mike? Uh, my first Gen Con was, I think, 99. So... Oh, well, later than I expect. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I moved back here in 98, so... Uh, yeah, I didn't go when I was in like high school or anything like that. And it was mostly just, again, it was getting together with people I played games with in grad school down in Florida. We all met at, we all stayed in one hotel room and that was cool. So, so that you, was- you were, you were in Chicago, your friends were scattered all over and you all got yeah. together in Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got to see them again and uh, I've been every year since it was at in uh, since it was been at Indiana, so. Okay, so a few yeah. times in Milwaukee, and then every year in Indy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, and it, like you said, the appeal for, for for me now is not seeing the games. It's, just, it's too big. It's too many people. I don't like that, and I never. It's not like I'm looking forward to getting anything anymore. It's just seeing the people. You don't want to wait in line for six hours to get the latest X-Wing or Kingdom Death model? Yeah. Well, My that's always like, oh, everyone's like, oh, can you can you pick this up for me? You know, and I'm like. Come on. I, I love people that go there and then they have to walk around with a giant box for the whole day. Yeah. Like, I saw this kid. Like, I I swear he was smaller than the Twilight Imperium box. It was, <laughs> it was like an ant lifting twice its weight. And I'm like, the whole day, you're lugging that shit around. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, for sure. So you you love the Gen Con experience, though. Is that fair to say? No. Okay. I like meeting the people there, but meeting again, people it's, it's you already know big. people yeah, you know. I, what? People you know already. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not there to make, meet new people, but you know, Mike's buried too many friends to make new ones. <laughs> yeah, you're trying to you're trying to call the, the you know. The yeah, friend. I know. We got I gotta get rid of this. I gotta lose some friends here too. But <laughs> stop yeah. being such a friend slut, Mike. Yeah, and I, uh, you know, I, I run the the Blood Bowl there, and I've done that for, I don't know, eight, ten years now, something like that, so, but I don't do much else there. I did drag ball there for a little while, but luckily that was taken away from me, so. If you didn't commit to running things, would you still go? Uh, if I go because- Katie would make you go. Yeah. If you yeah. or Katie did not run anything, it was, let's just go for fun and walk around, is that worth it? Uh, for me, no. I, if Katie stopped going, I could find someone else to run Blood Bowl. I may not go, but she likes it. The best day we had at Gen Con last year was on Friday, because both of us were like, let's just not go. And we hung out, we saw a movie, we went to Brian's house later, uh, and had some food and played some games. That was great. But and then you went back on the weekend? Yeah, Saturday, because they had to run Blood Bowl on oh, Saturday. That's actually kind of a cool concept. I mean, it sounds basic, but it's something no oh, one does. No one takes a day off, you know? <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. Really, you really should. You're going you're gonna to sleep better. You're, you know, you're, you're going to hydrate yourself better. All these things that you just, people don't do properly at cons. You took a day off and easier to deal with crowds then, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. Um, and, oh, and they, you know, the timing always interferes with summer school, so that's always a pain, so. But I mean, it's, it's 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 a nice experience, but I've done it, you know. And, and just to clarify for our viewers, you're not in summer school because <laughs> you keep on failing gym class, Mike. I know. I know you're a little slow, but it's not like summer school level just yet, right? Mark Harmon's summer school level. Fun fact: Mike, or Mike's wife Katie, and me, we were both in summer school, but for the smart kids. Yeah. What happened? We were, Vol voluntary summer school because that's cool then i went to computer club fun fact yeah uh extreme you have i know you because uh, you live in indianapolis where gen con has been for do we have his exact address that we can give out everyone knows he lives on lois lane i don't mind yeah. saying it uh i won't say the number though all right all right so you've been in, you've lived in Indy for a long time gen con's been in Indy for a long time did you ever go when it was milwaukee I did not. No, the first year I went was uh, 03. Where the first year it was in Indy. Oh, 03. Yeah. So I went, um, really, the only reason I went that year, um, because I don't, even, at that point in time, I wouldn't even call myself a gamer. I was just a Blood Bowl player. 
because I didn't play any other games. What did you think about just the gaming, like as a, the community, whether it's card, board, D and D, that kind of stuff? Like, did you like that's not for me? I only play Blood Bowl. Um, yeah, pretty much. I mean, I, I mean, we go really far back, and I kind of like flirted with 40k before I found Blood Bowl, and then kind of moved away from 40k and just focused on Blood Bowl for many, many years. So you were gaming um, curious. So um, for you though, you but you thought you're. I play Blood Bowl. These are a bunch of dorks. I don't, you know, I'm I'm not a gamer per se. I just like this because I will tell you that in a lot of my early Blood Bowl leagues, I had friends that were exactly that. And so I didn't know you guys then, but actually Katie was in some of those. But I had at least three guys in uh, my league that, like, I either worked with them or we were friends in other ways. And I said, check this out because it was football and it was sort of, um, you know, an you know, a little bit of fantasy element, but it was still based around a football board game that these three guys joined Blood Bowl. They would never do anything else. And, and, and I knew what to bring up in front of them and what not to, but they were Blood Bowl. Like Blood Bowl is a huge crossover game. So for you, you know, I'm a Blood Bowl player. Did you go thinking like I might dabble into other stuff? Uh, that wasn't my intention at all. And I don't, I would, at that time, I didn't really have any, judgmental attitude towards other gamers that just it wasn't for me i focused on this one game and really at that time i was only playing blood bowl with people that i had introduced to blood bowl and that was the only game they were playing too so it's like this whole league where the only thing gaming wise any of us did was blood bowl um but that first year gen con was kind of you know eye-opening to me outside of the game stores i would go to buy stuff to see all the games and stuff at the convention it was pretty cool but then i I didn't really buy anything that year. It was really the next year, 2004, when I bought some other stuff and kind of started getting into other games a little bit. But still, it was focused you know, 99% on Blood Bowl for years after that. Okay. Uh, so over time, though, you started getting other miniature games. And so, but you've, have you been to Gen Con ever since that, that year? I've missed three-ish. So no, not, not every year. Okay. Uh, so for me, I remember going, it had to have been either like nine, maybe 96 or maybe 97, my first year in Milwaukee. And, you know, I had a group of friends, we played Blood Bowl, we played 40K. Um, that's probably about it. I mean, we, some of those same guys, we played some board games with here and there and some card games because the nineties, every IP in the world had their own card game. So I'm like, Hey, let's, uh, let's play Highlander. Let's play Dune, all these weird card games that don't exist today, but um, in Milwaukee, what I liked about it was it didn't seem overwhelming. It seemed like, you know, it was my only convention I've ever been to. Um, and this is well before Adepticon. So it's the only one I've ever known. And it was like, okay, this is cool. Then we were able to drive up from Chicago, same day, come back. We never stayed overnight. Uh, we went multiple days, a couple of years, and we just drove up each way. And so it really, and, and like admission was probably 20 bucks if that, so it was just one of those where it was a it was a no brainer. As long as we had a, you know four guys in the car, we easily made it worth going there. And so the highlights weren't to play any games. We didn't play any games. Trying to, we we did demos. We didn't play any game. We didn't like sign up to any game. We did demos, of course. But we would go for to you know walk around, see different things. This is probably pre internet or if not early early days of internet. So we wanted to see you know new models, new games, all that. Um, we used to love going to the auction because you get a bunch of stuff super cheap there. And um, the other cool thing is we would go to Gen Con on Sunday because a lot of guys would give various deals. And me being a, a, a wheel and dealing Greek boy, um, I'm like, all right, so let me buy all those hills and those those uh, those mountains, the extra terrain there. Twenty bucks for all of it? Oh, come on, man! It's not like twenty five. Okay, deal. And it was like we would go home with a bunch of that kind of stuff, stuff yeah. that people didn't want to lug home. And we loved it because it, it enhanced all of our games we were playing and we were able to get cool stuff. Um, but it was just a, a, a visual thing to walk around and see stuff. And then as time went on, it when it moved to Indianapolis, I didn't go the first few years because then it seemed like everything was amped up. There was more to get in, now we're staying over. Um, and it just seemed like cost wise, the same people didn't want to go. I also didn't really hang out with some of the same people anyway. So there was also that, um, I didn't go to Indy until 2006, I think. And, um, 
it was cool because it's it was so long. I mean, for it, I'm trying to think the last time, probably the last Milwaukee time I was there was maybe 2000, 2001. So it was several years in between. And I saw just a shit ton more people and I had no idea what to expect. Like there's, you know, there's an escalator in that mall and it's packed. And then every line for every, everywhere to eat, just packed everywhere. And it was just, I couldn't believe it. And there's people outside. Milwaukee didn't have that. People outside were just walking from their car into the con. Nobody was hanging out outside. So it seemed like the move to Indy made it almost like, um, I don't know, fest, like music festival-esque in a way where people are just hanging out because it's summer. You might see like four people sitting on a corner rolling dice and you just never see that in any other way, people playing games outside. But it had kind of a weird uh, Lollapalooza-esque kind of feel in a way. And so I thought that was really cool to see. Um, but I also realized that it's growing and growing and growing and there's just so many things out there. And at that time, you know, we have the internet People are already buying things online and seeing things online. So that, that sexiness kind of went away. Um, I think I played Blood Bowl there. If, if I did, would that have been like when people show up, they don't normally play and they have like all fantasy players as a team, right? Yeah. Is that more of a Gen Con thing? It That's was conventions in the general. early 2000s, yeah. Okay. I think the one I went, that 06 one I went to, um, I, I, if I remember correctly, that's where – I, mean, I might be getting confused with Defticon. That's what I'm trying to remember. But I think that's where I met Tom Rummery. And I'm like, this guy is yelling at people. This is a total dick. He's yelling at me. And I later on, I'm like, oh, that's his character. I get it. He's <laughs> angry Tom. And then I you know, played a guy with all these like single posed dwarves. I realized like, uh, kind of like some things we always talk about outside of the show is, oh, you're doing it wrong. Like you're, you're, doing, you're doing nerd things wrong. And in reality, it's more of just, you get used to things in your own way. So we had Blood Bowl leagues. We got used to, well, we turn our players. That's kind of what we do. We, I tell you what my guy has so you know. It's like, well, it's right on my roster. Just, you know, I'm like, well, I know, but we'd like to have, you know, we can talk. It's okay. So there's those sort of, um, what do you, you know, I don't know what you want to call it, the parts of the, the game that we took for granted. And then you realize at a con, like, oh, shit, like people don't always do that. So I don't think I went back until probably a couple of years later. It, it was at that point, probably every three years for me, maybe every four. Um, I don't really remember each year, but it was, you know, so since it's been in Indy, it's probably only been three times for me. And I, it's kind of a, it's, it's so big and it's so out of control. Um, le was it last year extreme that we did the death pass? Or was that two years ago? That that we did? Oh, that would have been two years ago. Two years that ago. Was, in, at least. In fact, that was, well, so there isn't, you know, 2020, 2019, might have been even three. So I think it was 2017 because we had, um, you know, we, we had the Kickstarter, which we'll talk about in another episode, that was live at that point. So I made it a point to say, I'm going to pull out these expenses and do this right. And I brought like a, you know, like a pullout, made like a banner thing. I, I set up boot space with another company. And I remember, I don't know if Extreme remembers this, but I remember just thinking, and I probably told him this, like, I'm so glad, like, we are behind the table right now, because these people can't even move. We were in these aisles that were, and I think they were like the, the new, like the indie publisher kind of aisle. Nobody could move. It was like wall to wall, and everyone's got strollers and backpacks and all this shit, you know, and it's, I couldn't believe it. And I'm trying to do demo games, and I'm feeling through, through the person in front of me, their anxiety, I'm feeling like they're just like, all right, dude, just tell, tell, me, tell me what the spiel is. I don't even, they, they, like they regret saying I want a demo because they know that they're getting hit in the head by every backpack. And, and so I, that's my last time I've been there. And it was so many people that I just, another, like a different day at that same con, I was not sort of, you know, on the job, so to speak. I was just walking around and I specifically looked for areas that weren't that crowded to look around in. And of course you see somebody, you know, you, you talk to them, but th those areas like the vendor hall areas, it's just, it's so, so huge. It's so out of control. And I just, they, I have no desire to experience that again. And I think we all sort of feel that at this point now, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. The, uh, I get a little deal cause, uh, Tom Anders gets me a, uh, a vendor badge for running blood bowl. And so I get in an hour early 
Oh, nice. And that is the only time I'm happy in the vendor hall, you know, because I can, if I got to buy something for somebody, I can get it reasonably quick. And then, then when the gates open, I am out of there. So. Yeah, that's smart. Yeah. It I'm looking for, looking for the nearest food truck as soon as the gates open. It's, it's almost to me like Gen Con's just too broad an appeal because you have collectible card games, board games, uh, role playing games, cosplayers, all of this in one. Yeah. Where maybe That's they should point. split it up a little bit and say, so, this is this con, this is that. Yeah. So last time that happened, I'm walking in and I remember this is, you know, um, I'm by myself and I'm lugging all this stuff. I'm lugging, you know, stuff like the, the huge, you know, metal sign holder, all this stuff. And I'm texting extreme, like, where are you at? Let's meet up, blah, blah, blah. And I remember just before I even walk in that there is um, this, you know, I don't remember what she was dressed up as, some cosplayer. And there's a guy asking for a picture. And then he decides to go a little over the top. And so and every, everyone walking in, including me, we all just stopped while he was doing this pose. He turned into like, all right, um, like give me Tiger and give me, and, and just like making this girl do all these poses. Like it's the most, I couldn't believe just what she was putting up with. So this guy can get a picture. And I realized, is this what this has become? And I walk in and I was right. It's exactly what it's become. It is completely out of control. The identity it once had is gone. It is now something for everybody it's and, like san diego well, comic-con basically it's gotten right. to that level of commonality it know? is it very much is and um and i don't even know i mean is it at the point now where they say it's too big for that place now well they've capped the registration and when it was the what was it 50th anniversary yeah 50th anniversary it that sold out good. and last year it came closer some days it sold out so but there's not a lot of places in the Midwest that they can really move to, you know, Merchandise Mart. That's going to McCormick Place, Chicago. Yeah, yeah, yeah McCormick Place. That's what I meant. Yeah, uh, but the, they don't have the hotels there, you know. And yeah, because it's right downtown. Yeah, yeah. The, they just don't have the space to hold it. So I mean, unless they move it to Vegas or something. Well, people already complain about the cost, and that would bring it to a bigger city. Oh people. my God! Yeah, so much. Yeah. So at this point, um, I, I, we don't know what's going to happen this year, but um, all, let's say all things being considered, um, my, uh, Veldrick, you're still going to Gen Con. Yep. Right? It, it, you know, extreme. Yep. If, if things were all normal, it's, everything's on, would you go? Uh, I don't think so, no. Because of the I would hope to catch up with Mike on some day that he skips the con, but I don't <laughs> think I would be done there. So you, you would be there for Mike's day off. Yes, I would have uh, my own Mike and Katie con. So are so is are you Ferris or are you Cameron? And Katie could be Sloan. <laughs> so um, yeah, I think I'm kind of in the same boat. So Gen Con, obviously, we talked a lot about that. It is overwhelming. Luckily, there's plenty of other cons that are way more specialized out there for each different type of game you want. Um, I'd like to shift it over to Adepticon. It's the one that we're all most familiar with. Um, I have been to every single... Hey, JP, before we go to Adepticon, can we just pour one out for the cons that no longer exist, like uh, uh, GW's, what was it called? Oh, Games Day. Games yeah, Day. yeah I used to go, I went to almost every Games Day, too. Here's, okay, so let's, I, I, can I pour it out without making a mess? I don't know. <laughs> Could you put a Slurpee be poured out? No. Or, or <laughs> you give Slurpee ratings to the cons? I can, but I won't. Okay, so Games Day was great. We'll talk about that. Games Workshop ran Games Day. It started off in uh, Maryland, so their home office is there. And uh, Dean actually went with one of his buddies, which is, you know, way back when. And um, he, they went there, and they, he was taking all these cool pictures. And it was just like this experience, because we didn't have, in the 90s, we didn't have GW stores. So we didn't know, you know, like, oh, my God, it's great. There's like a tank out front. There's, uh, it just looked like larger than life. Well, because I remember, like, being envious of people who lived in the UK. It's like, there's GW everywhere. Yeah, this is all, pre, you know, pre-bunker, pre-all that kind of stuff, pre, pre-GW stores. So then, as GW stores started to come to the United States, and I think the first one we had was Gurney, and then a couple more popped up here and there, uh, in the Chicago area at least, they decided, let's have some more games days in, in the rest of the country. So Chicago had a games day for not every year, but it was kind of, here and there, several years, and I had a blast. I remember going one time, uh, Dean and I went, and it was, uh, it's my brother, we had, uh, we, they had all these people that, these clubs set up tables for their club. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, this is already, like we've already been to Adepticon, 
And so this was still like, we didn't see this. At Adepticon was way more tournament based in the mm -hmm. early days where it wasn't really a con. It is now, but it wasn't really a con in the early days. Where, so games day was, you, you go there and I remember seeing this, um, like this really cool figure eight track and it looked kind of like, uh, you know, like a pod racing of sorts kind of thing. And so- Now you, this is pod racing. Right, now this is pod racing. <laughs> Fun fact, one of the Zlurp Nation members went to school with Jake Lloyd, tried to sell him weed, he didn't want it, Ooh, yeah. Are you cool, um, bro? <laughs> <laughs> and so um, the, we went out, we said, hey, what's going on? These, these guys, some clubs said, well, here's what we're doing. We've got uh, six different jet bikes. Uh, or jet bike equivalents. There was like Eldar, Dark Eldar. They all had like, you know, but rules on the card for each one. We kind of did like a little mini draft. We all grabbed one. We didn't have to know anything. We were like, oh, I don't want to learn. Like, no, it's fine. Trust me. It's literally like, you know, how far do you move? What do you want to attack with? And then one other thing. And it was just very basic. And we had a blast. It was fantastic that these guys made this table, brought it to games day, had a free game for us to play. And it was like the way things should be done. It was like a great experience. And that's kind of, I've always had good experiences at Games Day because it never felt like, even though everyone knows GW is, would like you to spend a lot of money, this is kind of like their, once you're in, you're in. Like, you're good, man. Because that's what they did. You had all these free games to play. They had build and, you know, paint and build, or whatever you want, you know, where you, here's all the bits, build something for free, use all of our stuff. It's yours for free. And I remember even seeing um, one year, had these carnival booths set up and it was like each one was a chaos god and they had carnival games for each chaos god so like what I, you know equivalent like ring toss but you're throwing like discs of zinch or something mm -hmm. and um it was just all that kind of stuff i had nothing but great memories at every every games day but they didn't really last i don't think the attendance was was really there all the time you know i i went to one and this was back in early 2000s i think it was when uh Todd still had Crooked Act Games in Schaumburg. And uh, I went there with a buddy of mine, and they were constantly doing the orc. Wow. Yeah. And so, then, and that was fine. You know, I was kind of just looking at the displays people had set up. It was really neat. And then people started getting all up in, like, well, how come you're not doing the wah? And I said, I'm leaving. So we left, and there was another con downstairs that was Transformer Con. And I remember thinking, why is this not called Decepticon? Oh, no. <laughs> especially since you found it on accident you know yeah and it was it was cool but then i went into the cd underbelly of decepticon and it was mm. the anime that you, did, you don't want people to see you watching yeah yeah it's optimus is prime i get it yes uh yeah so i think he that accidentally have... found it <laughs> is that true he accidentally found the cd underbelly yeah. yeah well i think i have a like like pigeons have that homing instinct i have mine for anime porn <laughs> Yeah, it was a little GW culty with the, the wah and all that. And so I, I, I get that side of things. I mean, they're still gearing things towards kids, too, at those. So I, I get it. Um, any other kinds of all three of us were at that games day, but didn't know each other then. Mm -hmm. Probably. I was at that games day, too. I was, I was the War Master Club. And uh, <laughs> you were in the War Master Club? Yeah. Yeah. Me and Gus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, 10 millimeter, man. It's the perfect scale. Yeah, for your penis. Mm -hmm. um, so, <laughs> well, I'm no Don Johnson here. Hey, Looks guys, like that's crazy. a joke. It's impossible for Mike to have a 10 millimeter penis. <laughs> I just want to say that. Put a disclaimer on the screen there. Uh, yeah, so I think the game days were fun. They, they, they were what they intended to be. They weren't uh, a corporate sellout event like you would think they were. They were very wacky and improvisational, which was, it was kind of... Cool. A, uh, yeah, and they always had people dressed up as Space Marines walking mm -hmm. around and... It was almost a um, like a fan fest, yes. you know. Like if there, if if we cared about meet and greets, that's what it would kind of be. It's, it seemed like a, 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 a if you're into a very specific fandom, like people have, you know, certain things they're really into. It seemed like Nickelback. a fan fest for that. Was that like Nickelback? <laughs> they're very popular. <laughs> I don't know how many people were there, and. Here's what I say to the tournament organizer, or the organizer, I want my nickel back. <laughs> that's what I paid to get in. Um, so let's talk about Adepticon. You guys cool with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, Adepticon, you know, for people who don't know, most people know what it is. Uh, it is a gigantic miniatures, mostly based convention, but now other games 
in the Chicago area. It's been going strong since 2003. As I mentioned earlier, it started off as here are some tournaments. Wait, I don't know. Am I, am I next to you, Theron? You're below me. Oh, okay. So, like, <laughs> am I doing it? I feel like Nick Arcade, by the way. <laughs> um, so, Adepticon started off as these tournaments. And I went to not 03, which is their first one. And I went to 2004. And I played in a Blood Bowl tournament. Um, I don't know if Mike was there. Were you there, Mike? Yeah, the one that was from 8 to 3 in the morning? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was there. Okay. So that one, and yeah, there was just, there was a couple of weirdos in that tournament for sure, besides us. Papa Nurgle and... Uh, yeah, Papa Pop Nurgle, there was a really weird dude that, not, I think, uh, I don't want to say any names. But uh, a question, who was the first vendor at Adepticon? Uh, Crooked Hat Games. Yes. yes. Yes, that's right. Todd mentions that only every video. Just yes, kidding. I, think uh, he, I think he has a shirt <laughs> that says it. First? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so Adepticon was, you know, that first year I went, I don't want to say I was disappointed, but it was a little underwhelming because I didn't want to play in 40K tournaments. And I wasn't playing fantasy at the time anyway. So I was only going for Blood Bowl to look around. And my only experience at comms was Gen Con. So when you get there and you see, you know, Todd, which is cool, but I also could go down the street and see Todd as well. Yeah. And you see a few other guys like, hey, I've got custom bases over here. It's like, okay. And then, then that's it. That's all they had. And so Adepticon was really Adepta tournament for the first couple of years. And they started to really find their own elements. And I mean, it is 100% homegrown. I give, you know, uh, Matt and Jeff and, and then Hank later on all the credit that they've grown something that was nothing to gigantic. So that's awesome. But it was targeted very much so to mainly 40K tournaments in the early days. Um, I kept going every year because it was essentially in my backyard. Why not? It wasn't until it finally opened up to a lot of other things that I really had a lot of fun there. And then I, I, I've played a lot of games. I've, I've scheduled games. I've played in tournaments that I never thought I would do. I've done all these at Adepticon because it almost felt uh, it was comforting because it wasn't Gen Con. It was our thing. It was like we, had, we felt like we belonged at Adepticon. And even though I might play in a 40K tournament, might get my ass kicked, I really didn't leave that pissed off you know I was kind of everything was a better experience because I think Adepticon was a little more um, just focused on the types of games we were playing and I don't know if you guys you know want to share when you first started going in the same experience or not I started going seriously um, towards the last years that it was in uh, oh where's what town is that Weston yeah at the Weston yeah. yeah and it it wasn't super great because it was cramped. It felt very cramped there, and the vendor hall was very cramped. It just wasn't a very big venue. But I started actually participating in events when it moved to the Schomburg Renaissance Center. And that venue is an awesome because you have breathing room. Vendor hall, you have breathing room. Every tournament room, you have breathing room. And the so, quality of the events, like the level of the scenery they set up, has gotten better every year. You know, the first year I was at the Westin, I was like, look at all this space. Because I was at the Marriott in Schaumburg, and it was in like these lobbies and these small yeah. little conference rooms. And so it was kind of funny that that was your experience, but mine was, oh my God, it's so great that it's here now. And I thought it was the best thing ever because it was way less crowded, if you would believe it, than it, than it was then. Well, one thing I've missed since it left the Western, and I think this still happens, it's just the Western, there's only so many places you could go to see everything is yeah. some of the dioramas they would set up at night, you know, when they would, for judging and, and that these clubs would put together, were just jaw-dropping. Yeah. I mean, even so if like, you're not uh, in the hobby, you'd appreciate it, you know? So, like, Ted, you know, one of the Goff Rockers, the Orc Rock Band, definitely check them out, by the way. We got that somewhere here. Oh, there it is. <laughs> I'll try not to cut myself. And um, so he had this crazy, huge uh, Orc Gasmatron display um, and it took me, it took, I think, either Extreme or, or my brother to tell me to go look at it because it was in, I think, the 40K team tournament room. And I was trying to avoid that room at all costs because it was super crazy and mm -hmm. just super crowded. So there was a bunch of shit I know I've missed every year for like just because I don't want to be in a big crowd, you know? Yep. Whereas now every room is plenty of room to walk around and look at stuff. Yeah, it's much better now. So one thing I will say though is, for anyone that's never been to it, if you want to see a tournament that happens with where every table just looks amazing, 
go to the 30k slash Horus Heresy rooms, those people take their hobby seriously, but they don't seem to take the competitive end seriously, which I also appreciate. Yeah, that's a good point. I think the the 30k community they um, they are proud of the rules that they've sort of um, in in a weird blood bullish way that the rules yeah. that they just sort of evolved and never really changed over. They're proud that they're, you know, resin and forge world and all the, the lore that goes into it. So I, I definitely think that's a cool, cool side of things. And they do, it is some amazing stuff there. It's a good point. But I mean, you know, there's so many paint competitions and other things that people are being judged on. So people do go all out. I mean, mm -hmm. somebody's worst display board is better than my best paint job on one model. Like yeah. that's, that's the level they go to. I mean, if you're in the 40K team turn at Adepticon, I've seen people with, um, like, they all put their army on a Realm of Battle board, and then yeah. they put all four together and made, like, you know, a corn symbol or something. And I was like, that's the kind of shit that, like, I mean, it's way over the top for me, and I'll, I'll never do that. Right. But I think it's the coolest thing ever that people are, are so dedicated. And then you ask them, like, where are you from? And they're like, oh, California. Like, holy shit, you either drove, I'm assuming, with yeah. all that stuff, or or tried to fly with that, which is insane, cross country for this con. And, and it's like, it's it's pretty cool. Like just the, the level of dedication that people go through. One thing it has definitely over Gen Con is you don't have to pay a dime to see all this. Oh, oh yeah. No. Yeah, great point. You know, um, I've told people, uh, you know, other friends, uh, family members, you know, like, oh, what's it all about? I'm like, stop by and check it out. You can walk around for free. And they're like, really? I'm like, yeah. And, and it was still that, are you sure they're not gonna like i'm like no like, it's really set up in a way where they want observers and i think it's great i think that um you know they've got a tough job when it comes to deciding where events go i think they want certain events where there's foot traffic and some where it's like all right well no offense to your game whatever it is but no one's really gonna you're in the upper level in one of the yeah, right. we're, gonna, we're gonna put you in you know up there you're next to you're, ne you're next to blood bowl yeah, you're you're gonna yeah you're gonna be in you know ecstasy room D or whatever the fuck it's called you know <laughs> and, and that's it. But I mean, they try to make sure that if someone walk, I mean, if someone's literally just at that hotel just on their own for fun, that they walk by and they're like, oh my god, holy shit! And some kid might actually get into a game or adults when they see this stuff. So look at that I, fat kid at the Sanford and Son booth looking through tau bits. Yeah, <laughs> probably stealing well, as well. Happen huh? to be there getting married. And you oh, have that was going on next to you. Oh, yeah. You know, maybe you just stop in and start picking up a new hobby. <laughs> well, you say people are stop, happen to be there getting married. Are you saying Indepticon wedding hasn't happened already? Well, I, I mean, it wasn't. Uh, sure, it has. But there was one year at the uh, first place where there was a wedding yeah. going on in a couple of yeah. the ballrooms. Did um, the bathrobe guy finally tie the knot? Literally. <laughs> 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 so I think um, you know, Extreme, you've been going to Adepticon off and on since I was running Super Bowl. Was that probably the when you first started were you going before that? I think so. Oh four, I think was my first one. No, oh, oh five. Well, well oh five would have been my first one. Yeah, so that's well before that. Did you play Blood Bowl there? Um I actually you know what I don't even know if there was Blood Bowl every year. So I, I no. When was that the was first year thing. you did they want you to run Blood Bowl? So, yeah, that's kind of um, – so I, I don't know what happened in 03, but in 04 they ran Adepted Bowl, which was the overnight one. And then 05, I think he wanted me to run in. I was kind of like, eh, I don't know. Um, and they didn't have it. And then – yeah, and then 06, we did Super Bowl, you know, outside of it. Wait, I, it might have been 08, actually, that I – that the first Super Bowl was there. Mike, you might know. Do you remember the first Super Bowl? What year? Uh, let's, that was 08. Yeah. Okay, yeah. The so, one that was in Heather's parents' basement? Well, yeah. Not the, sorry, I shouldn't have said the first Super Bowl in Adepticon. I don't, I think 06. What, well, this I, year was supposed to be uh, Super Bowl 13. So. Okay. So I think 06 and 07. Yeah, 06, 07. Super Bowl, or. The first, maybe it was, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever it was, the first Super Bowl at Adepticon, Hank, you know, he asked me, hey, would you mind running something? I go, well, how about instead I just move this one over because there's already a group of people who know what it is. And then the flip side, you can help us get miniatures made. 
And um, yeah, that's right. Because we did two of them because we had two impact models. And then the third one was Gorgon miniatures making the rest. That's what yeah. it was. Yeah. And so um, that was how he lured me. I mean, and it, not, you know, not in a bad way, but lured me into doing it was I had to, I mean, as if anyone knows, Mike knows better than anybody else, when you run a game at a convention, um, outside of love for the game and the community, there are no real positives because you have no, you have no control over timetables. You have no control over entrance fees. Usually you just, you're stuck with what you're stuck with a lot and you've got to roll with a lot of punches. And to someone like me, who's a big control freak, I have a lot of, a lot of difficulty with like putting things and someone, Hey, where's our custom dice? Uh, I don't know. It's supposed to be like, we don't have them. Meanwhile, it's like, who the fuck cares about a custom D6? But to someone who does care about it saying, I don't know, doesn't always fly. So cons have that thing with it where that was a big part of me asking Mike to take it over. I'm like, I just, I, I can't do this anymore. Um, it, it ruined me from wanting to run this because of it. And so, you know, I'm thankful that he did it, but that is something that I think a lot of gamers don't think about, you know, they never think about, you know, Oh, I could run this. You probably could if it was at a store, but could you put up with what everything that really goes on with, you know, Mike scrambling, like, yeah, the awards aren't here for some reason. Don't really know why. Or why don't we only, why do we have half the boards? We're supposed to have 30 boards, they gave us 15. I don't know. And like, people are supposed to be okay with that. And so that's a, a very uh, unique personality to run events at conventions. On the flip side, one of the weaknesses that I have is I'm terrible at social media, advertising, all that stuff. And running them at cons. Yeah. That's built in. Yeah, I, I, just, for you. I just put out a rule set and whoever signs up, signs up. That's Same thing at Gen Con too. It's... So yeah. I, I am the Greek diner. I'm <laughs> tears. You bought a McDonald's franchise. You want it all handled for you. Exactly. Inevitably, you're going to survive and I won't. So I, that's kind of how that works. <laughs> so um, as far as uh, Adepticon goes in, in cons, is it everybody's favorite convention to go to? By far, oh, yes. By far. Yeah, okay. It's definitely the yeah. one I'll spend the most money at, too. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the mirrors have been pretty painful. Yeah. Two of the things I like most about it is that it's focused on miniatures and has painting requirements across the con. And yeah. I, I don't know of any other convention that has that. I, I think that's going to slacken. Because I, I agree with you that, that you know, everything's got to be painted. That's one of the keys to adapt kind of why it looks so nice when you walk around looking at the boards. But I think that's starting to go away a little. Well, here, here's what happened with that. So, um, and there's probably a, a real name for it. Mike probably know, knows the name of whatever it's called. But, like, so as, as Adepticon went to other games, the painting level kind of, like, or whatever. Hold on. Yeah. That's right. And so um, it, when it was all GW stuff, it's no issue. Everyone knows you better paint your shit to a pretty good standard. No matter your level, everybody can get to like a certain uh, point. And everybody knew that. And as you start to get into other games and board games that have miniatures, like, you know, Cool Mini or Not and Fantasy Flight, all those, good luck enforcing that. It's very difficult. So I think it kind of was a byproduct that came with expansion. Yeah, the bigger tent brought in a lot of people that, that they're not even, they're not interested. It's not that they don't have the time. They have no interest in the right. painting or the hobby side. Like I'm not here for the hobby. I, yeah. I, I like miniatures, but I'm not here for the hobby side. And so enforcing it, um, Mike, at this point, is it left up to each TO to, to tow the line of sorts? There are rules about that. Uh, like w for Judgment, for example, the first couple of years they were there, they was basically they were at the demo level so they were allowing people to buy the starter set and then use that in a tournament unpainted so and i don't know how it works for song of ice and fire if they have to be painted or not well, i don't that, know anyone that's painted any song of ice and fire john has i, I did but then i, I sold it off. But, uh, <laughs> never saw I, painted stuff you know this i know i know you know what it was though so quick side note if i had the entire stark army painted i would have kept it yeah. The fact that I painted 30 models and I had 200 to go, uh, it's like, I'm good. Um, but uh, so judgment, that's interesting. So when, when uh, Extreme showed me the game, and for those who don't know, we'll have an episode on it, but it'll be 54 millimeter, uh, you know, kind of, you know, 
three to five models, very small model count, but um, we bought some models that th we thought were cool. Even if someone said, hey, let's do a tournament, you can just show what you have. I looked at those models, I'm like, I need Whoa. some time to put this together. I got it. I can hear you, Mike. Okay, there you go, sorry. Are you good, Mike? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I looked at the judgment models, I'm like, well, I gotta, I gotta clean these, I gotta take some time. They don't assemble very quickly, very easily. So um, I see Mike's beard. There we go. Yep. Where's that is balls, I can't tell. And uh, I don't think I could have played in an event. If, Extreme, if you said, hey, we just bought a couple models, I bought some, let's go play. I, I probably would have said, well, like, maybe we go to my house and glue them together, then we'll play. But I, I'm not gonna be a turn, because I, I would have felt bad for people who actually took that shit seriously, that I'm showing up with like, he has no arm, and it's a base here. And I don't think that really is what a lot of well, the last, I think the last one painting was basically the tiebreaker, right? For judgment, yeah. Yeah. So it's the first tiebreaker. It didn't matter. He didn't need no tiebreaker to win well, that. I played in ju the judgment tournament last year, and um, Andrew, the creator of the game, he really went all out to make sure that everyone had painted models by uh, allowing his own collection. Like he had every single model painted. In fact, some of them he had duplicates of. And of course he brings out this, like, I couldn't even imagine what all went into it. Magnetized upside down, like this whole elaborate thing, amazing paint jobs. And I think I had, um, I had three models that uh, Jeff painted for me, but we did the pick them where I had to put five out there. So to people like, Hey, just don't pick the unpainted models. Okay. Like don't be that guy. Somebody still did, and then I borrowed one from the creator of the game, but because he really wanted it to, and I don't know if that was a combination of like self-serving of, I want, I want my event to have the best models possible, or is it also policy, right? Well, for, for judgment, the painted models sell, the models sell the game in a lot of ways. So having all painted is definitely going to attract, especially because they're 54 millimeters. So yeah, I could definitely see him lending his painted models out so you know gives that coherent look to everything well, he's taking pictures and stuff for his yeah. facebook page and he probably yeah. wants them painted so at this point um adepticon we'd all go again it's no no oh, question sure. right yeah. um what other gaming cons have you guys been to that i think are worthy of discussion because then what i want to do is wrap it up at the end and talk about sort of con etiquette if you will um what what are some of the other cons mike you've been to origins a few times yeah, I've been to Origins a couple times. I really like Origins. It's, there's a lot of, one of the things I really enjoyed about Gen Con in the, early, in the late 90s was like the, going on Friday, all my friends would go and we'd do board game day and we'd go to the board game room and just demo board games all day and play all these new games. And Origins has a lot of that. You can, there's, you know, $2 for a demo for some homebrewed miniature game that's, using little Shogun Warriors or something like that. And I just had a ball. I really enjoy that. And it's not super crowded either, right? No, 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 not at all. And yeah, it's, I just have a good time there. Uh, you can't get the Sunday deals at Gen Con anymore, but you still can at Origins. So I, I end up buying a lot of stuff at Origins. I, I had a good time there. Gen Con lights? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. It's, uh, I couldn't tell you how many people were there, but it's, you know, it seemed pretty spacious, even though there were a lot of people there. I'm sure that it's in the thousands, if not tens of thousands, but now, it's not the 70,000 you get at Gen Con. So. You feel bad talking about it and, and telling everyone the secret that it exists. And now <laughs> it's not going to be for the cool kids anymore? Well, it's been around for decades. So, yeah, I mean... I remember seeing ads for it in the Dragon in the 80s. So it, it's been around for a while. So I, I think, yeah, it just has more of a small con feel to it. So, and it, yeah, it, it, yeah, because, yeah, Gen Con's too commercialized to me for me now, but Origins, not so much. So, Shreem, you've gone before, right? I have. I've gone a couple of times. Um, the biggest negative, I would say, is that it's in Ohio. Ugh. So, why is that a negative? Because Ohio's, Ohio's garbage. It's the worst state in the country. Whoa! Basically the United States version of Canada. How many Slurpees does everyone give Ohio? Go. Zero. Can't get, I give one. Half. Oh, oh we can't do halves. One. Man, I, I got to make a brand new graphic just for Extreme's rating. Yeah. 
just I'm not putting any effort into anything Canada related. It's just the straw. Sorry, Jeff Burbage. Yeah, I like you. If you're watching. So, um, no, extreme though. You you like the idea of it though, and the atmosphere, right? Um, sadly, the two times I've gone, I've gone because it's close enough to drive back and forth for me. Um, I drove there, played in the Blood Bowl tournament, and drove back. So I didn't really experience the convention either time that I went. Were you going solo? Is that why? No, I was going with other people, but we had one focus was to play in the Blood Bowl tournament. Now after you play four games. One goal, win the whole goddamn tournament, get the fuck out of here with all the trophies in the back, right? Yeah. (laughs) Did it happen? No. I did have – um, there, I was playing one guy because at that time when I was going to, I was always advertising my own tournament. Like, okay, I'm here. I met someone new. Hey, I run this other tournament. Why don't you try that out? I played this guy who was local. He's from Columbus, I believe. So I think he said he had like a 10 minute drive and he was complaining about it. And I was telling him about my tournament. He's like, I would never drive that far to the game. I was like, who would do that? It's like, well, you're talking to someone that just made the other trip, obviously. So I guess I would. We, we drove to and from Indianapolis to play Super Show, a card game that literally takes five minutes to play. And you don't even really like that much. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here, here's the thing, though. If we didn't go to that, I don't think Extreme would have had a tournament. So no. That's kind of we, – we were compelled to go to make it exist, I think. You would just be him and that one weird Nazi guy. <laughs> Is that redundant? Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a minute to figure out who you were talking about. But yeah. Do you have any non-weird Nazi friends? Oh, I said, <laughs> whoops. Well, um, the, problem, the problem is I have so many Nazi friends. It's hard to figure out which one, one I'm talking, talking about. about. You, should put, you should put numbers on all of them so we can tell who's <laughs> um, So what other con- – Mike, have you gone to flat con ever? No. Okay. What, what other cons have you guys been to? Been to Hoosier con? Yeah, UConn, you UConn. I went to and XCon Arbor. and I won a trophy. Yes, yeah. XCon's awesome. Did you go to <laughs> XCon as well? I went uh, to XCon. I think I won the the the, the dread ball tournament there. Extreme. I'm... Talk about UConn. What that is? Uh, UConn was basically the gaming group at the University of Michigan that would hold it on campus in some of the student halls, or I don't know what it was called, student. Whatever those like the you know. Yeah. Yeah. It was on campus. It was pretty cool, but it was very small. It's basically the local game store kind of did the whole thing. Um, I remember the first year I went was after attending like Gen Con and stuff. And I was kind of, that was my first small convention I ever went to. And I was like, um, those guys over there are playing Mario Kart. Like what, what's going <laughs> on here? Like, I don't... Blood Bowl there or no? Yeah, there was Blood Bowl there every year that I went, I played Blood Bowl. Oh, really? Okay. Because I thought well, it might have been – so when I ran the tournament there, I think it was 2006, I think it was it, – it wasn't run the year before. Yeah, there was a one-year gap where it wasn't run. Before that, John Lewis ran the tournament there. So Extreme is proud to say he not only is a longtime NAF member, the, the Blood Bowl, Worldwide Blood Bowl Club, but he used to go year after year to the tournament that the first president, not George Washington, but John Lewis – was that so you uh you got to uh, what's the term rub sh- rub shoulders rub elbows what's the term rub elbows rub elbows I, okay so were you trying to like campaign then because later on you ran for stuff you were like listen you're kind of like like an like a a young hillary clinton for example you know you you said uh, you're planting seeds early and you're saying at some mm-hmm. point i'm looking to be the shit you're i know like, brian yeah. celebrates naf in all of its glory at all times no, but- but back then, Extreme had aspirations, and now, you know, he's, he's – I didn't, I didn't have any aspirations at that time, and I wasn't really impressed by people at that time either. So, no one all accounts. <laughs> but now, everything's awesome. Nothing – things didn't impress you. Like, so, you show up to a Blood Bowl tournament, and the guy who wrote the Blood Bowl books has two women on his arms. You're not impressed by that? Is that Big Head? <laughs> no, the guy that wrote the, the novels. Matt Forbeck. He <laughs> What's up, dorks? Like that kind of, you know. And extreme, These are my girlfriends. Uh, yeah, I don't care about her. Could you sign here, please? <laughs> I, no. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I think, we all, I think we all own his autograph because it was given away so freely for a while there. <laughs> oh, Mike's so, got to take a dump. 
Oh man, why don't you bring the camera in? Make it make it worth it. Um, so when you went to UConn, you were going and checking out other stuff and playing Blood Bowl. Was your primary goal in most of these conventions to play Blood Bowl there? Yeah. Okay. Yep. And I don't think that's that weird either. I think that a lot of people, you know, you like a, people get into certain. Now it's it is harder now because there's so many games that just exist. But people do hone in on a game in a gaming group around a game. So it's no surprise that their goal when they go to that con is to see more of that game. You know, Extreme, when you go to Adepticon and you're at the Privateer Press booth, you want to he- see what's coming out. You know, you were trying to collect the patches and other cool things, like, because you're into that thing. And I don't think it's that weird to pick a game and hone in on it, but many times it introduces you to other games once you're there. Yeah, I think that's a great pro for going to conventions is um, not only – I don't know. I think we've put a lot of negative spin on some of the conventions, but there's a lot of good things too. I mean, like getting together with you guys in Chicago, like that's a lot easier if we have the excuse of, oh, we're going to a convention. So we're all going to be there. We're going to hang out. And that's probably the best part of the convention, right? It's like getting together and just hanging out with people outside of the games. But you almost need that excuse of the tournament that we're going there to attend or the convention. Uh, yeah. to actually get together that, that's, a, so that's one big thing but then also like the um bumping into new games that you had never seen before but interest you and you can come back the next year and that's the game that you're playing yeah. it's games you wouldn't be exposed to otherwise for sure it's uh it's it's almost the like um you know in a weird way when you take a, a gaming club that's in someone's basement and then you say let's bring it to a store and usually like half the people are like no half really want it it's because of that, because you're going outside of your comfort zone. It's the same thing with a con. You go outside of your comfort zone, and it can be uncomfortable at con sometimes for a variety of reasons. But on the flip side, to keep the positive spin, that is where you meet new people. That is where you see new games. That is where everything kind of comes full circle. Um, yeah, I mean, how many times have we seen a game we like, and then the next year we go and play that game at the con, or at least if we don't play it an organized version, we play our own thing with it but you know it, and it's a good point extreme about the excuse to hang out we most of our fun stories from conventions occurred outside of the convention um, I mean we remember things there but it's like you know going to you know play at someone's house or Kuma's Corner or having you know I, the other day I was going through the old Zlurpcast comic strips and it was like this castle said Lord Ashley's pub. And if it took me a second to get what, what that even meant. Like, oh, that restaurant that we went to after, you know, it took me a second because I was like, oh, but it, all those inside jokes and those stories all happened with, I mean, I'm, I'm calling your term in a con, but for same purpose. We went to an event, but also we did this other fun stuff. And that is kind of where the memories are made from. Um, so I yeah. think that I, I'm glad you brought up the positive spin but somebody watching this that doesn't really think that going to a con is for them i would say go check it out try not to go in with expectations though because i get i get let down a lot because i go in always thinking like all this stuff's gonna happen and i always get disappointed but that's my own fault for expectations well i think it's important like in all facets of nerddom if you to go to a convention at least once like if you're into comic books go to at least one comic con of some kind just to see what it's like to see how exciting it is for you or maybe it's too much for you but to have that experience one time like i i would be very disappointed if i had never gone to a gen con because well, i would always be wouldn't know like, if it was yeah. for you or not you yeah but yeah. now that i've gone many times i have no problem missing it but me like i if i never had sex with men i wouldn't know if i like it or not <laughs> exactly see you have to try everything at least once yeah right well there's that there's a proposition right there um <laughs> episode four we might hear about Biron's first time I, i'm assuming first time well i had to try different times to make Listen, sure i know Dave you thinks know, that to turn me off of it or you got a little wild at western illinois trust yeah me. what happens at western stays at western <laughs> um so at this point um other conventions that would be on your radar any, anything out there that you think besides the one we talked about that you want to explore? I think Dragon Con is an interesting newer one that's happened. It, it seems to be starting along the same lines as Adepticon where it's tournaments, but they started with a much broader base. Like we played a Kings of War tournament there. I mean, Todd made us play in a Kings of War tournament there because there weren't enough people signing up. 
And oh. I won the tournament because I plopped. Well, I sat down in one spot and didn't move for any of the three games. You're known for receiving medals and trophies, but like, like the like a dishonorable so, like, stolen heard. glory for sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I had the second best blood bowl defense, which is technically true because I did not give up a single touchdown. Is that because they didn't printed, play they printed two second place ones and you just took one? Yeah. Yep. Well, I go, Mike, can I have this? And Mike says, yeah. <laughs> Extreme, you've talked about going to conventions that are the, the – like Games Day for Games Workshop, um, like brand-specific conventions. Is that still something you're interested in? Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, no – I for to go away from gaming, I'm signed up or was signed up to go to a wrestling convention for the first time, so I was kind of hyped about that. But – I don't know. Marco Roman? That, no. Oh. Not professional. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I'm just kind of in the point where I need a break from all gaming conventions. I, I get tomorrow. it. Well, for a time, I know you wanted to go to, like, Private Your Press's events. Cool Mini or Not has a, allegedly a cool one mm. in Atlanta, I think. Um, somewhere down there. And then yeah, on the other side, I think Fantasy Flight Reaper. does theirs in Minnesota. Right? Yeah, that's where they're headquartered, I think. Yeah. At ReaperCon has become pretty cool too, especially if you're into painting and stuff. It's in Texas, I believe. Yes, um, yes. People were talking about because I know PAX is video games, but now there's PAX Unplugged. Is that mm -hmm. a? It sounds miserable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you'll see a lot of fedoras there. Is all I'm saying. So, I Biron likes to be the asshole character. Of the movie, but <laughs> if we're all picking picking our class, yeah, uh, the asshole, uh, and obviously extremes the curmudgeon, but. Um, I think that might be true, but it also might be Mike's experience at Origins, where it's smaller and mm -hmm. you actually get more of what you hope for a con because we're all a bit conned out of Gen Con at no interest. For some people, I bet some people are like that with Adepticon already. I bet some people are like, you know what, I went, you know, back then, but now it's too. So I think that as things grow, it probably is much like Extreme says if you have an experience to try it, it might be good to try a new convention new to us at some point, just because we don't know. It might actually be a lot of fun or it might be like Biron says, we don't know. What, one of the ones I'm interested in maybe going to at some point is um, TMX, uh, Tabletop Minions, whose big YouTube channel for tabletop wargaming does a very small con up in Oshkosh, Wisconsin at the university yeah. there. That's good. That's a really small con, like probably just maybe a couple hundred people, I think. I like that guy's videos. It's Todd's doppelganger, too. Yeah. I like him because he's got a big head like me. <laughs> no, he's got great videos. What I like about him at Tabletop Minions is they kind of talk about these, you know, these other topics a lot, too. These things, what's, you know, whether it's hobby related or even just like how to act in, you know, gaming stores. It's, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's a great channel that they've done. So um, on kind of a similar note, so someone going to a convention, what are some do's and don'ts at a con? We'll wrap it up with this. My number one is hydrate because convention halls are so dry. Chapstick, deodorant. All for you or for every, mean everybody? Everybody. I don't need it because I exude a, a, a delicious smelling musk yeah. naturally. <laughs> and also you're more of a Carmex guy on the lips. <laughs> Actually, no, I, I have a giant lips, lip balms. Okay, well you- yes. This is a brand I recommend, it's uh, Duke Cannon. Uh, smash that like and subscribe. Uh, thanks to our sponsor. <laughs> All right. Uh, Valdrick, what are your do's and don'ts at a con? Uh, same thing. Just, you know, make sure you have plenty to drink. Uh, wash your hands. Because, again, con crud is a thing. It is real. It will take you down. Uh, bring snacks. It's always good. And uh, just try to have a good time. Try to keep positive and just try to roll with with the situation. Oh yeah, roll. That's funny. Roll. Oh. <laughs> Unintended pun. Yeah, extreme. Um along with what everybody said already, uh don't overschedule yourself. Like one oh, of the yeah. biggest the biggest times I've had like miserable convention experiences is because I had like constant event after event for 4 days. And then when I finally learned as I got older to like, hey, let's, you know, put some break time in here to do nothing and then it'd be as just a lot more pleasant. I enjoyed it a lot more. Yeah. 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 I think what you should do is think of everything you want to sign up for and then divide it in half. 
That's a yeah. great point. It's like when people talk about like how to do a budget properly and they like, well, pay yourself first. Like, ah, I don't do any of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's kind of fun. I'm glad you said that extreme. It's a great point it because is. what happens if you don't do that and you're overwhelmed, you end up in situations like extreme and I, we, we both dropped out of a tournament and this guy was so pissed at us, even though we were both dropping out and we told him we were leaving. Like we could have, one of us could have left and not said anything, but there were people like, a lot of tournament organizers get upset about things that not going to plan. So the best way to drop out of the term is never to sign up to begin with. Yes. Um, for me, it's everything everybody said. And I will throw in there, um, don't drink as well, because you will be healthier the entire time. You might not think you're having it as fun because you might feel like you have to drink to have fun, but I, it just takes everything out of you because you're not going to get a good night's sleep. You're going to be dragging. And then you're going to be that person in an event telling people, how, how you're not taking it seriously because you're so hungover and your opponent hates hearing that because if they win, it's like, and if they lose, they feel like a piece of shit then. So it's a, it's a lose, lose at all times. If you just do that and it's happened to me before and this is not a fun experience there. And really we know those people, it's not so much the drinking that they, they want to do. They want to talk about the drinking. Yes. More than yeah. the, like before it's like, here's my trunk. It's full of booze. We're hitting the Decepticon. <laughs> Yeah, it's way worse now in the, you know, uh, everyone wants to be an Instagram model uh, type thing we're in where it's about taking pictures of being drunk or about to be drunk. Mm -hmm. uh, but the reality is, like, you know, if you want to go out, uh, you know, obviously, you know, pick a cool restaurant, have friends there, and have a beer, just whatever. But just if you don't overdo it, you'll be much better because it's probably a con that's four days long. And you probably didn't take extremes advice and didn't schedule off time. You probably overloaded yourself. You probably didn't take Biron's advice and you didn't hydrate yourself with water anyway. So all those cumulative effects, and then you get sick and you get con crud, just like Mike warned about. So it all kind of, all of this stuff is actually completely true and it's hopefully helpful uh, for your next con experience. If you need to drink to have fun, you're not a fun person. There you go. Slurpcast <laughs> is, is alcohol free. Tattoo that on your balls. What would you say? I said tattoo that on your balls. Oh, okay. I want to dip my balls in it. All right. So follow Slurpcast TV on social media, at Slurpcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm doing this because I hope Biron puts it. Put it no, he's not going to do it. <laughs> uh, also, the website, Slurpcast.net, will take you to our official store. More things will be added. We get a little bit of a cut to keep the show running. I'm going to work on a Zlurp Nation shirt as well. So if you're in the Zlurp Nation, get that shirt to show off. How, it might get you late. That's all I'm saying. There's also a Zlurpcast discussion group on Facebook. Jump in there. We just recently asked about more topics, so feel free to add to the discussion. Outside of that, Zlurp on that button. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Leave some comments below. Uh, inside the comments, Biron will also put a link to the Slurp Nation. Sign up, free email list. You get bonus content, all kinds of cool shit in there. And that's all I got. Bye. Bye.